Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to discuss a little bit how to do round robins in contact. There are ways where you can do it directly on the edit view without scripting at all, but I propose that that is not really a scalable way and it's actually even easier, in my opinion, to do it by script. It's faster and you have more control over what happens there. And it's also much easier to change if you have like a lot of samples and a lot of logic, it gets hectic doing it on the edit view. I will quickly show both ways, but we will focus on the scripting. So quickly, round robins are when you are playing a real instrument, uh, whether it be a acoustic instrument or even electronic uh, analog gear or basically almost anything from real life, you will have specific nuances depending on the hit. So every time you kind of hit a piano key or, or pluck a guitar uh, string or play on an analog oscillator, there are um, nuances to the sound, basically. Even if you play at a very similar velocity and kind of give the same hits, there will still be nuances to the sound. And if we're using just one sample for a, a piano library, right, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You're losing all those nuances and it sounds kind of mechanical. And the same goes also, like I said, really for everything. It's really apparent if you have drums, for example, like the snare will sound exactly the same each time. There are other ways to do those nuances, if we're honest. We can randomize a tiny, tiny bit the tuning, or we can randomize a tiny, tiny bit the sample start. <clears throat> but if we're doing it with actual samples, different samples that we sample, then those are called round robins, and this is how they work. So over here, we have such an example. We have this um, piano that I sampled, and this is like a, uh, um, not physical moduling, but like a... a a digital piano basically where the sound is being generated every time you hit a key and as it generates them those nuances are also kind of being generated so we have here a simple um, one octave below middle C so a uh, note 48 and it's on velocity 75 but we have three different hits and if we quickly go over here into WaveLab we can actually really see this we can see that those three hits kind of look different the first one and this is the second one. You see that it, they, have, they have a different look to the waveform. Playing them sounds kind of similar, but again, it's those nuances that we want to capture. So let's start doing that. So first thing we need to do, obviously, is uh, load a new instrument. We will start from scratch here, and we want to go into the group editor. And since we have three samples, we want to have um, three different groups. So let's quickly duplicate those uh, that empty group over here. And let's call this one round robin one, and let's call this one round robin two, and let's call this one round robin three. So we have our three groups. And now we want to go into each one of these groups and drop our sample into, well, one of the samples into one of the groups, right? So just set that up basically. So let's go back here and let's take our first one. I'm quickly throwing them in and then we will, um, and then we will set it up correctly. So one, two, and three. And now let's kind of put it how it should. So we know that the root key should be C2 and let's stretch it across the keyboard so we can hear, cool. And then let's go to our second group and do the same. So root note C2 and stretch it. And we go to the third group and we do the same. So now our groups are set up, but if I now play a note, obviously all three will be playing at the same time. So we need to set up that logic where it tells it to, hey, when a note comes in, you're only going to be playing one of those groups, but select, select one of them basically and, and play them. So the way this is done, if we're working strictly with the edit view, and we can close the mapping editor, we actually only need the group editor at this point. The way this is uh, happening, if you're working strictly with the edit view, is you have those controls over here on the bottom, those group start options. And based on those options, contact will know how to play these things. But again, if we have three, maybe it's fine. But if you have really tons of groups and it's different sounds, right, like some of... So for example, right, you have three round robins for this velocity and for another velocity and then for some other sort of articulation and this and that and things can get really, really crazy. But suffice it to say, let's just let's just have a look. So the first thing you need to do is you need to assign um, all these base, these groups to to a, let's say, a group above. So another encapsulation, it's called voice groups. 
And I just really quickly put all of them on one. So these all belong to some sort of, uh, let's call it like a meta group. And yeah, encapsulated basically into one group above them, which can then have like logic applied to it, which will tell it, um, yeah, if to play or not to play. So over here on the bottom, those group start options. Now, all of them are, are now on always. So I play and they, they always play. That's just basically what it says over here. And you have some options over here. Let's quickly look at Psycho Round Robin. So if I go to all of them and I place them on Psycho Round Robin. And then the second thing I need to do is I need to tell them the position in the Round Robin chain. Now, if I play it now, they are still going to all play because basically I have all of them positioned in the round robin chain number one. And you know what? Let's do something additional just so we can view it a little bit better. Let's send each one of these groups to a different bus. So we will be able to see here on the outputs um, as the groups are playing. So let's quickly do that. So bus one, bus two, bus three. Now if I play a note, you see that they're all kind of playing together. So let's quickly uh, position them in the round robin chain. So let's do one, two, and three. Now as I play, awesome. First one played, second one played, third one played. So this already actually works for us. Um, it's playing every note with a different round robin, but it's still a little bit mechanical, right? Because it's it has a certain order. And if we want to re re we want to be really pedantic about it, which maybe we do because like in nature it does it doesn't cycle round robins. We can use some other logic. We can uh, cycle random. And, and now you see there's no position in the round robin chain because there is no position. It's basically just random. And if we do that and try it right now, All right, so that's already much better. And this is maybe what you want and you can definitely work with this. As you can see, there's additional logic that you can apply. I won't be going additionally deeper inside, but you can also say group start random and you have a condition here. So it can be um, depending on things that happen and whatever or whatever. But again, let's just cancel that for a minute and let's go back to group start always and remove the voice group. So we're going to go back to our sort of initial state. So always and remove the voice group. So just that everything is sort of kind of like we had it um, in the beginning. So here always as well. Cool. So now they don't have a voice group. They're all on always. And if we play, they all play together. So let's jump back to the script now and see how we do this thing by script. It's actually very, very simple, at least for our example. So we know we have our sounds into the groups already and we know what we want to do. We want to play on some logic and maybe we want to do it randomly and maybe we want it deliberately. So let's start. Um, to be honest, right here in this particular script for what we want to show, we actually do not need yet a init callback because we're not going to define any controls at the moment. Um, and that maybe is a good example to show that if you don't need a certain callback, there is no sort of, uh, you don't have to have those callback, callbacks. There's no guideline or like requirement. What we do need is the note callback because we want to kind of um, perform some logic when a note comes in. So we're going to do on note and we're going to close this callback. And then we want to see what we want to do with the groups. So the first thing we want to do, and this is just how it works, is we're going to disallow disallow group. And we're going to disallow all the groups. So there's a built-in constant in contact called all groups that we can use here. And this is just very simple. We don't need to loop over all our groups or anything. We can just tell, tell it to disallow the whole thing. I actually did not... Um, save this file. So we're going to be copy pasting into our NKI just because it's rather simple what we're doing over here. So let's go and um, apply our script. And now if I play a note, to be honest, we shouldn't be hearing anything at all because we're disallowing all the groups. And this definitely works. We can see that I'm clicking notes and absolutely nothing happens. So now we want to say, okay, we disallowed all the groups and now we want to play one of those groups. So instead of disallow, we're going to do allow group. And in our case, to 
do the random stuff, it's really, really simple. We introduce a random command and it just takes a minimum and a maximum. And remember that context is contact is zero based. So our groups are actually zero, one, and two. So in our case, it's quite simple. We're gonna say, look, you disallow them all. Now have a look again, allow this specific group and this specific group is a random number that's between zero and one. So it's either zero, one, or two. It's as simple as that. So we're gonna paste that back in and obviously nothing shown. But now, and let's maybe scroll down. First of all, we hear sound. That's already a good, a, a positive sign. We don't need this. And now if we play and we can look uh, both over here on the, what gets yellow and we can also see over here on the bottom. Let's try. And we see that it totally works as we intended. It's randomly picking one of the three and playing them. Um, so that's how, it's as simple as that. We can maybe even end the lesson here. So that's all you need to do. Obviously in a real life situation, now you gotta expand this logic to make sense for your instrument. Maybe you have 50 round robins, maybe you only have one round robin, maybe it's actually not these groups that you need to kind of take care of, and maybe you need to um, use variables for this, and that would be quite simple as well, because maybe you have uh, different areas on the keyboard for different keys or like maybe you need this logic multiple times, right? So maybe it's not group zero uh, to two. Let's really quickly show that. And for that, we will need our init callback. So let's do on init and, and on ah, and on and just show that we can instead of that's better practice in any case, instead of putting numbers over here, let's put variables. So let's declare declare just the very simple variables and let's call it, I don't know, just to show that maybe you have more, more, um, I don't know, maybe you have a piano and a violin here. So in our example, this makes sense. Other, other situations, of course, uh, other things would make sense. So let's do piano start RR and piano end RR. Quite simple as that. And replace our hard-coded thing over here. To be honest, if we're not changing any of these, these can actually also be constants. So we can do declare const, oops. Gotta have those mistakes. So zero to two, and this should work just the same as we had with the hard-coded variables, but it's a little bit more easy to change if you have large scripts and you have multiple things you need to do with allowing the groups. So you would set up constants or variables or whatnot for your groups. And let's quickly see. And yeah, we're good. The other way to do this, and maybe randomly is, we saw actually that it's a little bit more um, kind of representative of what happens in nature, but you can also do a deliberate sort of round robin of the instruments. Uh, you can declare something like I here and then do, um, well, no, not I, let's call it declare uh, RR. Or you know what, let's stick with our with our example of having multiple things. So let's do piano um, counter, piano RR counter. I don't know, why am I, why am I thinking so much? So if we have a counter over here, after we disallow the groups, what we wanna do is do, well, yeah, okay. So, and we know, we know the maximum is two, right? So we're gonna do um, allow group and, f and then we're gonna do, we don't need this whole random thing. We just do piano RR counter. And maybe let's, let's start with zero on the counter. So there is an initial value. So the first time you load this instrument, the first time someone plays a note, it's gonna reach this allow group it's gonna reach <clears throat> this variable and it's gonna say, okay, it equals zero, I, I need to play node zero. And then we need to obviously increase uh, um, this piano RR counter. So it's gonna be zero, it's gonna play node zero, it's gonna increase the counter. Now it's on one, next time node comes in, allow group, piano RR counter is gonna play group one, it's gonna increase it, the next time it's gonna play node two. And we'll quickly check if, I think we can, yeah, if this guy, once it equals two, um, 
Well, well, it's zero, one, one equals three, actually, because it's going to come in, it's going to be two, it's going to be increased to three, and then if it equals three, we're going to reset it. So we're going to do piano rr counter equals zero. Let's check if this whole thing works. So we'll paste that back in and go down here. So remember, now it initialized everything. To be honest, we don't need this at this point. I don't know why I'm being pedantic, but um, let's go like this. All right, now let's play. And you can see that it's playing sequentially. So that's the way how you do round robins in contact. There's the edit view way and there's the scripting way. I really recommend just don't do it the edit view way. It's old school. It's not what you need. You need this way. Um, you probably need to, you probably would prefer kind of the randomization way, but it really depends. There are other ways to do this, um, really quite modern ways where you can have all your samples in one group and, and have them in different zones and just move that particular zone to a group that is playing. I won't show it in this video. Perhaps I will make a more elaborate video where I'm showing how you move zones around between groups. And that is a cool way to do it as well. But stay tuned for that. And for now, I think this is, this is the information that you need to get going. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Happy round robining.